Okay, in this chapter of the uh, EMCO PC5 upgrade, uh, while I'm waiting on parts, I'm going to do a couple of things. First thing is I'm going to install these uh, Hall Effect sensors on the motor mount plates. So the idea is these Hall Effect sensors detect magnets. So I'm going to embed a magnet in the pulley, the ball screw pulley on the machine on both the X and the Z axis. And then I'm going to clock the, the pulley towards the end of its travels so that I have about a quarter plus or minus turn. <clears throat> so that what's going to happen is the Centroid CNC software, when I home the machine, that pulley is going to turn and when that magnet passes in front of the Hall Effect sensor it's going to trip and let the control know to set home at that position. Um, it's a pretty accurate way of setting home. Now with this machine I have to use reference marks. That is I'm going to move the carriage all the way to the Z plus end and the X plus end of their travels and put a reference mark on each axis. So that allows the user to jog the machine to those marks roughly and then press cycle start to home and then the pulley will turn and as soon as the magnet passes in front of the sensor we'll go ahead and set home. Um, if you don't have the reference marks well obviously every time that magnet one rotation of that pulley that magnet comes around it can trip the sensor. So you want to have a reference mark. So it's called homing the reference marks. And then again, it will, the Hall Effect, uh, the magnet will come around and uh, trip the Hall Effect sensor. Now the magnets for these things, uh, it's a very tiny magnet. Neo, I'm going to put it right here, neodymium. You can just see it sticking right there. It's a neodymium magnet. They have a north and a south pole. So one of the things we've got to do is we have to identify which poles which and mark the face. So we're going to do that by taking this Hall Effect sensor wired to an acorn board uh, and find out which face will trip the sensor. If I embed that magnet in the wrong orientation on the face of the pulley, then the sensor can't see it. The magnet won't trip the sensor, so we have to make sure that the pole is correct. So let's go over there and do that really quick. I've got the sensor temporarily wired up. The brown wire is going to this 24 volts. The black wire is going to input uh, six, I'm sorry, input seven, and then the blue wire is just going to a common. Okay? And if you go over, if we go over to the uh, diagnostic screen, which is Alt. I, you press Alt I from the main CNC 12 page, you get the diagnostic screen. Now, I don't know if you see it, but right here is the magnet, tiny little thing. I've already marked the, the pole, but I've got it faced up in the proper direction. So I want you to watch input 7 as I pass the sensor in front of that magnet. See it tripping? Now if I flip the magnet over and do the same thing, you see it will not trip. So I'll flip it back over the right pole and there you see it tripping. Kind of hard to see, but I was taking the, the sensor and putting it against the magnet. Another thing about these, when you set up switches, you don't want a sensor to come face on to the target. You want to hit it sideways, like this. Okay. Don't want to come this way. It's better to come across the face of this, the target. In this case, it's the magnet. All right, so what I'll do is I will mark my magnet with a Sharpie, just so I know. that that's the face that needs to go facing the, the sensor, okay? So that's that. Okay, I've made a couple of templates for each uh, original 
motor mount plate. This one is for the x-axis. This one is for the z-axis. Okay? And the space on the z-axis, this is the uh, left side. This is the left side of the plate. You'll see my mark and I've got dimensions. I've got three-quarter inches down and four hundredths of an inch from this left edge. And that's going to be the, the center of the uh, hole for the uh, Hall effect sensor. I think it's an eight millimeter by one. Uh, so I will drill and tap the plate for that to hold that sensor and then there's a lock nut that I'll lock the uh, barrel of the sensor against the plate. This is the x-axis plate and from the top edge there's a casting in the in the apron from the top edge here over it's going 750 thousandths and then it's coming down 275 thousandths from the top edge down and that's that's the location for the uh, x-axis Hall effect sensor so I mean, I'm not going to bore you with machining and, and that sort of thing. It's basically locating the point, punching the, the point, drilling and tapping for the sensor. And then once I do that with the plate, I'll go through with the... Uh, actually, before I tap it, I'm going to go through with the bit and I'm going to spot the pulley. And I'll show you that here in a second. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the spindle pulley for the timing belt that will drive the encoder pulley at one to one. This is a 60 tooth MXL pulley. I got it from, was it SDP slash SI. Anyway, the uh, part number is in the uh, in the Centroid CNC users forum, my build log. Um, it has uh, a boss. I'm going to grip it here and then I'm going to go ahead and drill and drill it out and bore it to the diameter for the uh, spline side of the uh, spindle. Here you can see the spindle and it is splined. So I will measure it and then I will bore this out so that it's a, a nice slip fit over that. I will take these two set screws and I will drill in between the tooth at 90 degrees apart and re-tap it to put the set screws in and then this pulley will basically slide on. I will also machine off this boss because we don't need it. Uh, I don't believe I've used it before. I mean, there's not going to be much of it left. Let's see. 1.147 1 and uh, it's about 950 thousandths. So I'll have to look at my, my uh, records, but I think I machined this off. I may have left it. There, there's room to do it. There's only so much room. You see this, this machine part of the spline? This pokes through the cover. I may have left it because there is room for it. But anyway, the goal is to install the timing pulley on the spindle and secure it to the spindle and then the uh, encoder will rest down here and then it'll be belted at one to one to the spindle. That will allow the customer to use constant surface speed. Uh, if he decides he wants to use rigid tapping, it can be set up for rigid tapping uh, and threading as well. So, I'll, I'm, uh, again, I'm not going to bore you with machining this out. There's plenty of other channels that show that, but again, it's take a, a large drill first to drill this out on the lathe and then bore it out to fit the uh, the spindle. So I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, here are the motor mount plates. So what I did is I used this drill guide. You could definitely put these in a drill press. But what I did is I measured using my templates and my markings and I center punched the spots where the uh, Hall effect sensors are going to go. Then I picked a drill bit picked a drill bit that would fit in my guide block. Then I used the guide block 
to go ahead and drill through so that my bit was perpendicular to the part. I did that on both of them. Now we've got it. We're gonna before I drill this hole to the eight millimeter by one. I'm going to use the same bit and I'm going to use the same plates. Use the bit through this plate to to put a center mark on the uh, ball screw pulley. Now before we do that, what I have done is I've brought the carriage all the way to just, I got the tailstock on and I set the tailstock at the very end of the bed and then I brought this carriage using this ball screw nut you can see it moving, I'm moving it in until it touched the tailstock. Now I'm going to go in until I'm in this, this, this smooth face on the pulley. So I've moved it in the Z positive direction and that is where I'm going to face or spot my pulley. So this plate will go back on like so and then I'll use the drill that drill guide that I got and my bit and I'll spot the pulley. I'm going to put wedges in the pulley so the pulley doesn't move so I can get a, a mark on my pulley. I'm going to do the same thing on X. Looks like you can see the pulley there. So I've done the same thing. I've brought the X all the way out in the positive direction. Okay, so it's all the way out. Now I'm going to roll it in until I've got this smooth face up at the top. Okay, that way I get the max amount of my travel. So I will put this back in now, like that, and then I will, if I can get my drill in there, I'll, I'll use the drill. Again, I'll wedge the pulley so it doesn't move. I'll use my drill to spot the pulley, put a mark, a dimple on it. And then I will drill out the pulleys. Doesn't have to go very deep. That magnet is only one millimeter thick, so I'll only go one millimeter. And then I'll bed the magnet in there with the mark that we made when we tested the uh, Hall Effect sensors out. So the pull is correct. Okay? So hopefully that gives you the idea. Okay, what I did is I used my, my long nose marker and I went through my plate, I bolted it on there and I went through and I marked my, my pulley. So one thing to watch out for is that measurement needs to be what it is. You can't go any higher. So if you look at my pulley, the mark is just above the center line of the shaft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill my, my pocket straight up about right here. And that'll be fine. The magnet will still pass in front of the sensor. You cannot move this hole because when the motor mount when the motor is mounted, there's very little room to, to go up. And this thing with that hole right where it's at the top slide will clear the Hall Effect sensor. So that hole has to be where it's at. And here what we want, we don't want to obviously drill into the center line of the ball screw, we want to go up. So I'm going to move this up in order to clear this space, this, uh, this hole. Looks like there might be a set screw in there, but I'm going to go up to uh, clear it and then I'll drill the pocket for the magnet. Okay, I've got the magnets bedded in. I just used some uh, RTV black silicone. Again, you don't need to make that pocket very deep. I pumped it, I washed the magnet and marked it again with the acetone. I flushed the pocket with the acetone and then I filled it with silicone and then I put the magnet on the face of the pulley and slid it into place. And you want to try and keep that magnet as close to the surface as possible, okay? All right, I've drilled and tapped this uh, x-axis motor mount plate. And if you see in there, you can see the magnet a little bit. And uh, it's drilled and tapped M8 by one. That's the, the, uh, that's the uh, thread pitch of the uh, Hall Effect sensor. And basically what I'll do after the motor's mounted is I'll go ahead and screw the sensor in 
until it bottoms. That means the face of that sensor is touching the pulley. And I'm going to turn it back out about a turn and then tighten the jam nut against it. So there's the uh, Hall Effect sensor mounted up on the X axis, and of course the Z axis is the same. So again, it has to go up high enough to clear the motor. You can see the motor is going to mount right here but low enough that it's not hit by the uh, cross slide. The z-axis is much easier but the x-axis is just tight because the, the, the pulley is, is right up in here. It's the bottom of the pulley is here and it goes up here so we can't go down because the motor's in the way so it, this is the only place for it. Alright, so that concludes the uh, installation of the proximity sensors. And there you see the timing pulley board to fit the uh, spindle. I'm not going to do anything with it now. I'm not going to worry about that shoulder uh, or the boss on it until after I get the, uh, the encoder and the other pulley and figure out what my alignment is. I think it'll be fine just like it is, but at this point we're not going to take, we're not going to take any material off until uh, we get the rest of the parts. So right now I'm at a standstill until parts show up. Alright, we'll talk to you guys on the next video.